Brothers and sisters, comrades and friends, I'm Cuba Libre, and welcome back to Let's Play Mark of the Ninja. Here we go into stage two, breaching of the perimeter. Use the breathing techniques I taught you. They will ease the pain. Let me tell you the story of the Ing, and of the champions who came before you. Before the restoration, as the other clans strayed and disbanded, a merchant sold us a secret. He led us to a flower whose petals burned with toxin. Put the toxins in your skin, and you will gain great and strange powers. But those powers will drag you into madness. That is why every champion vows to end his own life before he destroys himself. And the clan swore to protect. We must act quickly. Count Karajan is the head of Hessian services. He is responsible for the attack on our clan. His tower stands behind ring upon ring of security. You must kill him before he can attack again. And as we start the level, the vent inside is right in front of us. But drop down, and you get an artifact. Generally speaking, <clears throat> there's no wasted space in these levels. If you can get there, there's something in it. These buildings are protected by high-tech tripwires. But you can wreck them all with a simple bamboo dart. So yes. We have a new problem, new lasers. Be nearby. Destroy that, and you'll bring down all the lights. These little that lasers uh, trigger alarms. Those big ones actually just straight kill you. Watch. The alarms switch off when the guard walks past them. Yep. Pay attention to your little... Or when he's dragged past them. The guards have sensors on them that prevent the... Uh, that stop the lasers from working. So you can use... Uh, dead corpses to manipulate the laser systems. What was that? Here's an interesting mechanic. Normally a guard's sight range and a flashlight won't go through a vent, but if he's distracted by something right on the other I side of a vent, is. he will actually shine the flashlight through it and try to f and if you're stand standing on the other side inside the air vent, he will see you. So there you go. Horrible fatal lasers. I could just drag that body over there. But why bother? The transformer should be close. But be careful. The catwalks are crawling with guards. Now, this is our first situational seal, so we have to reach the transformer in one minute. And here I am failing. Because I just realized that, oh god, I have to run. The transformer should be close. But be careful. The catwalks are crawling with guards. You have to reach Transformer one minute, but it doesn't mean one minute from the beginning of the level. It means one minute from the beginning of this sort of area. And there's no way to know that except that the little text pops up on the left side of the screen saying, New optional seal. There we go, and I made so it there. Far, so good. Very quickly. But now, there's a whole lot of points to get with dead guards. So I'm going to go kill me some guards and get me some points. There's no time limit now. Generally speaking, Someone this game does not have time right, limits. There's another stupid so mistake far, so for good. you. Uh, there's a lot of those in this. Uh, I guess I should note at the beginning here. I've decided not to do the thing where I play hey, through what was that noise? and then there? get a very smooth run. Um, I think it's slightly more interesting to see at least some of the errors that I make and see some of the poking around that I do get a more accurate idea of what this game might be like the first time you play or close to the first time but also uh, it'll give me opportunities to explain more mechanics and why certain things are mistakes so now all the guards are dead however we have a nice handy dumpster and you can hide bodies at dumpsters each body you hide has 250 bonus points so there's really no reason not to Anytime you have a hiding spot available to drag every possible body you can over to it and hide it. Now it is tedious, 
And you don't really have to do it. I mean, if you are going for the leaderboards, and you obviously will have to do it to maximize your score. But uh, if you just want the point seal, you don't really need to do this kind of farming. But better safe than sorry. Sometimes you can kind of... Sometimes the margin's a lot thinner than you think. We'll put it that way. But here we go, that's completed. Now, at this point, I also remember that one of the other seals is to blow up 20 lights. It's one of the stupidest seals. And I'm like, ah, shit, there's a bunch of lights back there. I could explode. Now, there are more than 20 lights in this level, so you can miss some. You don't have to get every single one. But again, better safe than sorry. I remember there's lights available, and before I go too far, I want to bust the ones that I can. Now here is this transformer. What this is going to do once we break it is more lights. Turn off a bunch of the lasers and lights and then turn off the power essentially. And here we get our first piece of equipment, the noisemaker. Remember, if a guard is blocking your way, you can try to distract him. Now, I could just blow up the light and it would turn, cause him to turn around because it's right next to him. I mean, it's behind him. But I'll use the noisemaker instead. The noisemaker does what it says. It has a... It's just a portable distraction. It's like breaking a light, but you can carry it with you. Those electric wires would hurt you, obviously, if you went through them without turning off the power first. Here's one of the few times in the game where you have to use focus mode sort of in midair or while on the move. And this illustrates an interesting mechanic. Jumping between hiding spots is almost instantaneous. It's very quick, but it is not actually a teleport. You do physically move from one space to the other. And if you go through the light in the intervening time, see the guard's flashlights on me that time. Uh, you would still be seen. Very late in the game you get a real teleport that's actually a teleport. That? But that's not for a while, and I don't actually think it's that useful. Compared to what you give out. up to use it. But this time I'm going to play it safe. Wait until this guy turns around, then kill him. Magic. Here's our first challenge room. I don't know how these are explained. I, Diegetically, I think it's him sort of hallucinating, which it becomes more and more important as the game goes on because of the uh, special ink that allows him to have his superpowers. Um, I was just testing to see if busting that light would count credit, but it doesn't. So here the puzzle's very simple. There's that pad you stand on. It, uh opens that door so that lets down the crate. Now you can flip the switch back. That'll turn off the laser that's guarding the final scroll. And with the crate you can block the other lasers and get yourself up there. Simple enough. At any rate, the reward for a challenge room is a scroll. I think every level except the first one has a challenge room with a scroll in it. One of the i.e. one of the scrolls is the reward of a challenge room. Let me tell you the stories of the birth of the mighty Husky. Sorry. I meant to... I mean to allow you to listen to each of the little stories from on the scrolls, but, uh... I messed that one up by pausing. Oops. <laughs> so this game does also include... Although a lot of the platforming... While you're stealthing around, the platforming is, uh, is very smooth, but also very simple. But the game also has platforming challenges at times. There's another opportunity where moving between hiding spaces will be shown to you as not a teleport, because if you go between them while the lasers are between them, you will just die. You will jump directly into a laser. I'm going to terrorize this guard just because I can before I kill him. 300 free points. Why not?
The blackout is working. While the guards fuss over that, we can slip right by them. Now this part introduces an interesting new mechanic. Um, the sort of repair crews are working on the generator. Oh, first I'm like, oh crap, I forgot if there's any lights back there. So I go back to check for lights to bust. I promise this is one of the dumbest seals. I'm like, you know what? It doesn't look like there's any screw it. I know there's plenty later. Just oh, forget it. I'm gonna keep moving. Um, as you reach new areas, the lights turn on sort of a few seconds after you get there. Lights and lasers, the power. Um, so it's an interest if you sp there's no requirement that you go quickly, but if you go quickly, you can al often take advantage of a powerless place, a dark and laserless area, which lets you move around to enemies much more quickly. Here I'm like, eh, hey, whatever. Someone out there. Now you notice, because that guard can't actually reach where he saw the, dis the uh, disturbance, all he can do is look at it. Simple enough. Wherever there's a light, there's a potential distraction. Actually, busting lights is interesting because... In a certain sense, when you break them, it's a penalty. Because you break them to, to be in shadow. But, of course, doing so produces a sound. But more often than not, you can actually just use that sound to your advantage. And lights are just double good. A, you can bust it to get in shadow and be unseen. B, you can use it as a as a distraction without having to have things like noisemakers in your inventory. Now you'll see me make a lot of little hops like that when I'm just walking in straight areas. The reason is that running, of course, produces a lot of sound, as you've seen. Uh, but <coughs> falling produces no sound whatsoever. And jumping, laterally, is quicker than this normal walking, sneaking walking speed. So. Uh, when you want to move quickly but stealthily, uh, lots of little hops is faster than just walking. Now, I did say there's no waste space in these levels, mostly, but there's this weird corner down here for absolutely no reason. I have no reason why this elbow of alleyway exists. But it does. Not that I mind, I sort of wish games had more dead ends in general. Maybe not this game. It, this is not really an exploration game, although it does have exploration elements, certainly. Alert. A man in black um, spotted on the ground. And there's our last scroll. The master accepts. Any st or our second scroll. Sorry. And I fucked it up again by hitting pause. <laughs> Oops. Um, this game could be more explorational if it wanted to be, but it is not. And I think it has a nice balance right now. Usually there's about two routes to get into things. One is more direct and one is more stealthy. I think that works with the general speed and smoothness and flashiness. Russian's troops are scouring the grounds, but we can sail right over them. Meet and me on the roof. God, shut up. And 2 of the, the power game, power I think it works. Turning the power for the 15th floor back on. Luckily, <laughs> that guy that I just totally failed the stealth call on was just out of noise range of this other guy. Not that it really would have mattered. So you can see the lights aren't in here yet, because I killed these guys quick enough, they never came on. Um, and if they were on, this whole hallway would be lit, which would make things way more complicated. Now here's something I don't think I've shown off. You can see the sound of guards moving, even if you don't have sights. So when you're not pressed up against the door, you can't actually see inside the room, but you can still see him walking around. Now, of course, he's standing still. He makes no sound, so you can't see him. So you're still blinder. But uh, again, it's another nice little visualization of relevant stealth game information that works really well in 2D. Now there's all kinds of 
frustrating things that you think you should be able to do but can't. For example, that guy just walked right over the grate I was hanging under, but I couldn't stealth kill him from the grate. I had to jump through it and then do a normal stealth kill from the back instead. Here I'm actually waiting for the lights to come on. You can jump over uh, a soldier in the dark's vision cone just from standing, but it's dangerous. It's hard to get the arc exactly right. It's tough to do. Instead, I wanted the light to come on so it would reveal the corpse. Unfortunately, it's just sort of outside the, the different light ranges. So instead, I had to break the light and have the guy run over, or have the guy look. Then with his flashlight, he saw the corpse and ran over. Using enemy corpses to draw other enemies so you can stab them in the back is one of the best tactics in the game. Now this guy, I was like, oh shit, I thought he would stop in that room, but he doesn't, he keeps moving. Luckily, there was that second corpse. That, the problem with that first corpse is that it probably would have been too close to my hiding space, and when I came out, he probably would have saw me. But luckily he saw the second corpse and kept on running. And that was his doom. At any rate, yes. So for now, I can't stealth kill people through vents stay. like that. So is the repair crew. Keep moving. And this is just a slight glitch. This guy turned around magically uh, back for no on. reason and started an alarm. That was really annoying. But anyways. <clears throat> Oop, I can slip right into the <laughs> thing in front of right in front of his vision cone. Again, I'm sort of waiting for the lights to come on and reveal the corpse, but instead, fucking I just break the light and have him run. Why wait? So now these alarm lasers are on. Something I almost missed. I almost just ran into it. But yes, uh, a lot of those different kinds of stealth kills, dropping from the ceiling, uh, through grates, um, through doors, things you think you ought to be able to do are actually upgrades that you have to buy. And that'll happen. I thought you would get an upgrades this almost at mission. The but I guess they don't start until... Uh, maybe the next one, after you get the noise makers, which is your first item. You can also up buy new items, upgrade items that you've got. This actually took me quite a number of attempts, this little section here. And the reason why is that I wasn't content to just stealth kill dudes. I was trying, because I could drop a corpse on people which terrorizes them, I was trying to use the terrorization to my advantage and get them to shoot each other or something. But I couldn't quite make it work with the way that they were, um laid out. When you're trying to terrorize guards, darkness is actually a liability, because they can't get terrorized if they can't see it, so you have to drop bodies directly on their heads, um, and then if you want them to see a corpse to be distracted, again, it has to be in the light. So there wasn't actually enough lights there for me to do exactly what I wanted to do, but at least got one terror bonus out of it, if nothing else. I could have defeated it the first time through easily if I just wanted to kill them, but I was trying to be clever and manipulate the terror. Didn't quite work. SMOKING KILLS! And there's your pun for the video. Finally. Flint of Shuriken reflects as fear in the eyes of Tetsuji's prey. The final scroll. And that time I let you listen to it. Yay! And we've made it to the roof gonna meet what's her name I always forget her name and we're done with the level we made it into the complex this way all right folks that's it for this level you can see I uh, all nine seals plus I actually made the uh, the score bonus, even without the uh, the no alarms raise, that later on it's going to be extremely hard to do, but in these early levels they give you lots of targets. Anyways, I'm Cuba Libre, and that's it for Let's Play Mark of the Ninja. See you next time.